some more? Bonds, about $80,000 worth. They were taped under the desk. She had them stashed all over the place. Yeah, found two more bank books, too. So far, this adds up to about a half a million dollars. I don't get it. Dame had all that money, and she died looking like a beatnik. Go explain, people. Especially this cockamamie will she left. Everything goes to her cat. Oh? Well, I don't think that cat's going to be needing it, Lieutenant. Jonesy just found it down in the basement, cold, stone dead. That ought to complicate things. By the way, did the coroner finish examining the body yet? Yeah, just finished. Apparently, the old lady died of natural causes. Looks like a heart attack. Well, that ought to wrap it up for us. Come on. That'll be all. Wait for me outside. I'll call the captain and find out if he wants us to hang around here any longer. I hope not. This place gives me the creeps. Like a spook house. <laughs> think you're doing here in the study. Uh, is that what this is? Uh, see, I was on my way to the men's room. Falling on your hands and knees? Well, I'm very nearsighted. I was feeling my way and... You know I sneaked in. I want to beat on the other reporters. You can forget it. Your hokey methods are not... Thank you. Hey, don't shoot. I'm a representative of the press. <laughs> Tell him, Mr. O'Toole. Tell him I work for you. He does. You're kidding. Are you running a wire service or a nursery school? This kid ought to be out playing on roller skates. I didn't send that. I'm a photographer, a reporter, and editor of the sports section this week. Well, Billy for you. Hello, tool, and take the boy wonder with you. Call the captain. When the lawyer comes, show him right in. Right. Look, Lieutenant, give me a beat on this story. Now, all the other guys are from local newspapers. If I can just get a head start from my wire service, I... You'll get the story when I give it to the other guys. But I want it from your angle, how astutely you handle the case. Oh, look, Sidney, hey, get a good headshot of the lieutenant. That's right. Bring out the massive, rugged, handsome features. Don't butter me up, O'Toole. You'll get nothing. Uh, uh, lieutenant, say cheese. Yes. He had a drink. He was snarling. Look, Jim, give me a break. You owe me a favor. You remember the Jenkins case? What case? The Jenkins case. You're not going to let me forget that, are you? What do you want to know? Everything you got so far. The Sydney, take notes. The name of the deceased is F.E. Collins. Age about 65. He was a recluse who lived here alone, so far as anybody can remember. The body was discovered yesterday by a couple of kids who were prowling around. Looked through the window and saw the body on the floor there, and we were called in. Uh, how was she murdered, Lieutenant? Who said anything about murder? Oh, I can tell. I've got a nose for this sort of thing. I, I hope it was a gory murder. Well, that makes for better copy. Uh, was it a hatchet murder? Or, or, or maybe she was tortured? Maybe she was poisoned. Why don't you keep your wet little nose out of this? <laughs> what do you got there, Lieutenant? Is that a will? Yeah, it's a will. It's none of your business. Who'd bother to make a will? Who'd want to inherit this pile of junk? She happened to leave about a half a million dollars. A half a million dollars? Wow. That's the motive. Did she mention in the will who she left the money to? Yeah. Well, then it's an easy case to crack. Go on. Don't stop now. Well, don't you see? The one that she mentioned in the will, the one that she left all the money to, that's the one who murdered her. Now, why didn't I think of that? Well, we, we all have our blind spots, Lieutenant. Uh, who did she leave the money to? Her cat. Well, then that's the one... Yeah. Now, all we got to do is find the gun the cat used. We got him cold. Mr. O'Toole, can I write down that he's not being cooperative? Are you serious about Miss Collins leaving the money to her cat? Yeah, but he won't need it now. We found him dead, too. He was murdered. I'll bet he was murdered. Why don't you shut up? <laughs> Sidney, go take pictures. How'd the old lady die? Natural causes. Heart attack. Is the will still valid? We'll know that when the lawyer gets here. She named her attorneys, uh... Richie and Raymond as executors. I've already called them. Richie's on his way down now. Now take your pictures and go. Oh, Sidney... Uh, take pictures of all this mess. Oh, why bother? It's a pretty dull case if nobody was murdered. Well, somebody's gonna be if you don't keep quiet. Now, take the pictures. <laughs> what 
Lieutenant. Mr. Ritchie. Ritchie, I'm Lieutenant Coleman. How do you do? Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Thank you for calling me. It was a terrible shock to hear about Miss Collins. Your law firm represented Miss Collins? Yes. Did you know about this will? Oh, yes. Yes, it's a copy of the will she sent us a couple of weeks ago, leaving everything to a cat. Well, it won't do him any good now. He's dead, too. Oh, dear. Uh, pardon me. Uh, what happens to the money now? Well, I assume it will go to her next of kin. There's a relative? Uh, yes, a nephew. Or at least there was. He was her sister's boy. When her sister died, Miss Collins took the boy in. He lived with her until he was about 11 years old, and then he ran away from home. She never heard from him again. You have no idea where he is now? No, no. No, I dread these cases. As executors, of course, we'll have to institute a search for the missing heir. And I know what that means. What's the nephew's name? Uh, Petrie. John Petrie. How old would he be now? Oh, about 26. Where was he born? In a little town near Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, Fairport, I believe. Why all these questions? What is your official capacity? I'm editor of Headline Press Service. Now, look, all this information is confidential. I don't want it published. He's right, Mike. Every phony chiseler in a crackpot will claim he's a nephew. If they don't know the name or pertinent information, they'll make it easy to weed them out. As it is, we'll have enough deadbeats trying for it. Mr. Ritchie, I'll make a deal with you. I'll keep the name and vital information out of the story. If you guarantee me an exclusive interview with the nephew when you find him... Well, that will be up to the nephew, but I'll do my best. Mr. Ritchie, I'd like to have you come with me. I want you to make a positive identification of the body. Now, remember, you promised. I gave you my word. The word of John Michael O'Toole. <laughs> the word of John Michael O'Toole? Sydney, my boy, we have an exclusive. Headline Press is going to conduct a search for John Petrie, the missing heir. Yeah, but you just promised him that you wouldn't mention the name of the missing heir. Well, I'm not going to. We're the only ones who know the name. And when the right guy shows up, we'll know it. Let's get back to the office and start things rolling. Sidney, Sidney, my boy. Yes, sir. Got a very important job for you. Yes, sir. Well, now, since the story is on the streets, a lot of people are going to show up claiming to be the nephew. Huh? Now, your job is to sort out the phonies and the imposters. You picked the right man for the job, Mr. O'Toole. Not a single phony shall pass. <laughs> John Michael O'Toole. Oh, uh, that, that's him right over there. Oh, what do you want to see him about? None of your business, Sonny. <laughs> Are you the guy what's making the search for the missing heir? Yes, I am. Well, look no further. I'm the nephew. Let's have my money. Just like that, huh? How would you like it? Hundred dollar bills or a thousand dollar bills? It don't make no difference. Just put it in a paper bag and I'll take it with me. <laughs> Good old daddy. It was sweet of her to remember me. She's not the only one who remembers you. <laughs> You're Larkin, fingers Larkin, ex-con. Come on. You recognized me, huh? You got an eye like an eagle. What are you trying to pull coming up here claiming to be the nephew? So I'm not the nephew. But I got him stashed away. I know where he is. And for a fee, I'll deliver him. You know where he is? All right, uh, where is he? What's his name? What does he look like? Oh, no, you don't. I tell you and you grab him off for yourself. You tell me what his name is and what he looks like. All right, his name is Herman Klump. He's 60, he's fat, short, and he's bald. That's the guy. That's not his description at all. <laughs> well, uh, how about uh, tall, thin, and gray? Uh, how about uh, short, flabby, and bald? Fingers, you're being dishonest. You're still a crook. So what? I supply the nephew, you get the money, and we split it three ways. Oh, why don't you stop? You're wasting my time. Come on, now get out of here. Oh, one of them there guys with scruples, huh? <laughs> to each his own. If you happen to change your mind, you can find me right there. <laughs> They're all like that one. I don't envy you your job. Well, there are bound to be a few dishonest ones, but uh, I don't think we'll have that much trouble with... Uh, uh... Oh, all right, all right. Now, this time, now, let's keep this order. <laughs> the thundering herd has arrived. Have fun, boss. <laughs>
why don't you give it up? You've been interviewing people for three days now, and you're going to have a nervous breakdown. Yeah, I guess you're right. I hate to admit it, but... Oh, I beg your pardon. I believe I'm next. Sorry, no more interviews. Oh, but I'm this nephew you're looking for. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So were 800 other people I interviewed. All right, let's have your name. We'll get in touch with you. Oh, my name is John Petrie. Yeah, John Petrie. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just let me check. How old are you? Twenty-six. Where were you born? I'm Fairport, Massachusetts. It, it's the nephew. It, it's him. It, wait, wait a minute. Have you got any further identification? Any any legal documents? Uh, no, nothing legal. I have a driver's license and letters of address. Dora, take that down. Dave, yeah. Now, wait a minute. Uh, uh, when did you run away from your aunt? Uh, when I was 11. And when you were 11. And why did you run away? Well, I, I didn't get along too well with my aunt. Do you remember the cat? <laughs> How could I forget? Aunt Effie devoted more of her time to that cat than she did to me. Uh, I remember I, I brought a dog home once. I had him for about two weeks, and then Aunt Effie made me get rid of him because the cat didn't like him. <laughs> and after you ran away, where did you go? What, what did you do? Well, I saw Effie... <laughs> Hello? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, put him on. Mr. Ritchie. Boy, is he going to be surprised. Oh, uh, hello there, Mr. Ritchie. Yes, I was going to call you. Y you see, uh, I just found... What? Well, that's impossible. What makes you so sure? Uh, oh, he does. And you will. Uh, yes, all, all right, Mr. Ritchie. Goodbye. Matter, that was Richie. He said he found John Petrie. The real John Petrie. But, but that's impossible. I, I tell you, I'm John Petrie. You told us. He found the real John Petrie. This fellow's got legal documents and affidavits. But Mike, if he isn't the real John Petrie, then how did he know his name, his age, and where he was born? Oh, these phonies have a way of finding things out. I'm not a phony. Wait, and how did he know about the cat and the dog? Well, the cat was in every newspaper, and the dog, I never heard about a dog. I, 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 where is it? Where, where is it? Dora, don't stand there. Help me find it. Okay, okay, okay. What? You know, it might help if I knew what I was looking for. Oh, the little phone of the Snapchat I got from the old lady's house. Just put it here on the desk. Is this it? Is this it? That's it. That's it. He's right. That there was a dog. What kind of a dog was it? A German Shepherd. Right. What was the dog's name? Smokey. Right. Uh, what was the cat's name? Princess. Oh, bingo! He got it! Hey, Richie, that pony. Oh, I'm really going to show them up, I tell you. And you stayed with your Aunt Effie until you were 11 years old. Yes, sir. After my parents passed away, uh, Aunt Effie took me in, and I stayed with her until I ran away from home. Why'd you run away? I always got the feeling that I wasn't wanted. She paid more attention to that cat than she did to me. Did she have any other pets besides that cat? No, just that blasted cat. No uh, goldfish, parrot, dog, canary? No, just princess. Oh, thank you. Uh, may I see the affidavit? Why do you wish to see them? Well, no particular reason. just want to corroborate some points in my story. This is most irregular, but if you feel it's important, certainly you may see. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. O'Toole. If I can be of any further assistance, please feel free to call on me. No, you've been very helpful. Good day, sir. Good day, Mr. O'Toole. Good, Good day. day. You know, Dora, I've been thinking. That other John Petrie is a phony. But if he is, where did he get the affidavits and the baptismal certificate? They must be forgeries. Yeah, but everything in the affidavits makes sense. He knew everything about John since the time he was an infant. How did he know? Well, somebody must have been coaching him. Who? Who? 
Well, Richie, of course. He was the old lady's lawyer. He would have access to her personal papers, her accounts, her records, everything. They've been working together. What a perfect setup. All we have to do is get those affidavits, prove their forgeries, and expose Richie and that phony. Oh, that should be easy. All we have to do is walk into Richie's office, accuse him of being a crook, and ask him to hand over his records. Why don't we just go to the police? With what? All we have to prove is that one little snapshot. We've got to get our hands on those affidavits. And how do you suggest we do that, Moon Capitan? Uh, let me think. Would you call me? <laughs> Mind. Why don't we just break in at night? By George, that's it. You, you're a genius. I'm only kidding. We wouldn't dare. Well, we wouldn't have to do it. We'd hire somebody, a professional burglar. Oh, fine. We'll just put an ad in the paper, a burglar wanted. Bring reference. <laughs> or maybe we could look in the phone book. Under second story men. That's a good idea. Oh, Mike, stop joking. We can't break into an office and steal. Why not? We'll use a crook to catch a crook. Dora, you've got a lot of boyfriends. Aren't any of them burglars? Oh, a few, but they're all working. I go out with loafers. Mike, uh, I think maybe you better get some rest. Uh, never mind. I'll get somebody myself. Sydney. No, no, no. He couldn't break into a public library. Who? <laughs> Larkin, that's it. Fingers Larkin. He could crack open that safe like a walnut. He gave me his card. It's filed under here. <laughs> Fingers Larkin, thief extraordinaire, hold up, second story jobs, mugging, and safes cracked while you wait, 24 hour service, day work, double time. Talented. Come on, Dora. We're going to see how the other half lives. Fingers Larkin's apartment must be around here someplace. Well, what's Fingers' number? 122 and two thirds. <laughs> 122 and a quarter, 122, seven, eight, 122, nine, ten. 122, two thirds. It's got to be down there. Down there? Can't live down there. Well, that's what it says on the card. Hmm. Come on, darling. I'm not going in there without a vaccination. Don't be afraid. Penicillin will cure everything. Won't be long. We'll just tell fingers what we want. Well, I, I can't wait to get out of here. Mike? 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 Where did he go? Where did he go? Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't like the cops to see the light. What are you doing in my neighborhood, O'Toole? Well, you said if I ever needed you, I should look you up. It's always good to see you. Please pardon the appearance of the apartment, but the maid didn't show up today. Yeah. Did you have much trouble finding my place? Oh, no, we just got into a downwind and came in on the beam. <laughs> you. Won't you be seated? <laughs> Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? You want I should do a job for you? I want you to crack a safe for me. Whose safe do you want me to crack? The lawyer of the old lady who died and left her nephew a half a million dollars. I want you to get some papers out of there so I can get the money back to the rightful heir. You mean you found a guy? Yeah, but we ran into some trouble. Some phony's trying to do him out of his inheritance. That's why he came to you. You want I should knock him off? Mm, nothing violent or dishonest. Oh, no, we wouldn't think of it. What are you guys trying to do? Ruin my professional standing? You want me to get drummed out of Ex-Cons Anonymous? Ex-Cons Anonymous? Yeah. It's a group that me and a bunch of Ex-Cons got together. It's a wonderful organization. When one of us tries to go honest, he calls on another guy from the organization who comes over and talks you out of it. <laughs> sort of a benevolent brotherhood. Hmm? Yeah, that's it. Very touching. Gets me right here. <laughs> She's all hard. <laughs> Who are these guys trying to muscle in? Are they pros? No, it's the old lady's lawyer and a guy who's working with him. Amateurs, huh? If there's anything I can't stand, it's a no-talent crook. It's guys like that that give us pros a bad name. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this job for you for nothing. Fingers. That's very kind of you. I'll pick you up tonight at 10 o'clock. 
I'll have it open in a jiffy. Well, maybe we shouldn't have come up here with him. If we get caught, we can get 20 years. Yeah, stop worrying. Give you a chance to get caught up on your reading. Come on, fingers. We haven't got all night. Don't let me. You want to give me a trauma? <laughs> I want to check something. Come on, come on, let's go. I always leave a clean safe. <laughs> come in, Miss Miles. Gentlemen, thank you. Please be seated. Now then, Mr. O'Toole, you asked for this meeting. What is the purpose of it? Congratulations on a very clever scheme. I beg your pardon? You almost made it except for one little slip. And that one slip is going to put you in jail, both of you. What are you talking about? What is the meaning of this? This John Petrie's baptismal certificate. Where did you get this? Answer me. Is that John Petrie's baptismal certificate? Yes, it is. What is the date on it? July 15th, 1934. Whose signature is on it? The minister who officiated at the baptism, of course. 1934? Mr. O'Toole, I'm a very busy man. I don't have time for your theatrics. Lieutenant, arrest these men for conspiracy to defraud. Stuff, Look, it's all his fault. He, he planned the whole thing. I don't know what he's talking about. Mr. O'Toole, I'm a respectable attorney. You were until the idea of stealing a half a million dollars entered your mind. You knew Miss Collins had a nephew, and she did. The legitimate one, John Petrie. You told me he was dead. You said we had a perfect setup. Shut up. Richie, you knew all about Miss Collins' affair, so it was easy for you to forge the affidavits and to coach him on Petrie's background. Then you killed the old lady's cat, making the way clear for him to inherit the money. Don't you say another word. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Oh, Mike, <laughs> you're absolutely wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and you're absolutely right. He's true, too. Because of you, I'm a wealthy man. I don't know how to thank you. Now uh, you sent me a five-pound box of money. <laughs> how did you prove that the affidavits were forgeries? The baptismal certificate. It was signed with a ballpoint pen. And ballpoint pens were not invented in 1934. Oh, you're so clever. My <laughs> boss is so clever. <laughs> down, girl. Down, down. <laughs> Through the efforts of your reporter, the rightful John Petrie has been found and the inheritance returned to the right person. Now, uh, this is one of the most exciting searches this reporter's ever been involved in. Hey, Chief. Um, this just arrived for you. Oh, Wonder who sent it. In appreciation for a job well done, thanks a half a million. John Petrie. Oh, oh. Well, aren't you going to open it? I wonder, wonder what's in it. I'll be darned. He did it. He did what? He sent me a five pound box of money. <laughs> oh, well, aren't you going to pass it around? 